Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we have a pretty good understanding of all the various forms of power, let's try an example where we're given the voltage and the current in the time domain of a particular circuit. We're trying to find the complex power, the apparent power, the real power, the reactive power, the power factor, and the impedance in the circuit. All right, where should we start? Let's start with the impedance. So the impedance, by definition, is voltage divided by the current. And uh, we know that because Ohm's law says that I is V over R or V over Z. So that word looks pretty good. So in this case, the maximum voltage that would be 60 with a phase angle of minus 10 degrees. We divide it by the current, which is 1.5, with a phase angle of positive 50 degrees. So 60 divided by 1.5 is 40 with a phase angle of minus 10, minus 50 is minus 60 degrees. So this is what we would call the impedance in ohms of that circuit. If we want to know what the resistance and the reactance is of the circuit, we can find that. We can say that the resistance is equal to the impedance Z times the cosine of the phase angle. And the phase angle, of course, would be minus 60 degrees. So in this case, that is equal to 40. That's the magnitude of the impedance times the cosine of um, minus 60 degrees, which is the same as the cosine of 60 degrees. So that would be uh, one half, that would be 20 ohms, and that would be equal to R. And the reactance X would be equal to Z times the sine of phi, and I'm going to take the magnitude of that because I just want to know the magnitude of the reactance, which is equal to 40 times the sine of a positive 60 degrees. And let's see here. See, that would be 60, take the sine of that, times 40, that gives us 34.64, 34.64 ohms. Again, that's the magnitude of the reactants. Okay, what's next? How about the complex power? So that's by definition equal to V times the complex conjugate of I. Notice I didn't put bolt phase there, but that's implied. And so in this case, that would be equal to, uh, that would be, hmm, do we take the maximum or take the RMS? I guess we would want to take the RMS here. So let's put RMS down, RMS, like this. And so that would be 60 divided by the square root of the two for the magnitude and a phase angle of minus 10 degrees. And then we're going to multiply that times the current, which is 1.5 divided by the square root of the 2. Oh, can't do that yet. I forgot the phase angle. Can't forget the phase angle. There we go. Phase angle, of course, it's a complex conjugate, so we're going to take the negative of that. That would be the negative of 50 degrees, like this. And then we multiply, we get 90 divided by 2, which is 45. So it gives us 45 with a phase angle of uh, minus 60 degrees. Okay. And of course, if you want to find the magnitude of that, the magnitude of S, that's simply going to be the magnitude here, which is 45. And of course, the magnitude of S, that's the apparent power, which has units of volt amperes. All right, so far so good. Uh, what about P? What about the power, the average power? P average, or P, is equal to V RMS times I RMS times the cosine of the phase angle. So in this case, V RMS, that would be 60, divided by the square root of the 2. We multiply it times I RMS, which is 1.5 divided by the square root of the 2. And uh, we multiply it times the cosine of minus 60 degrees, which is the same as the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 0.5 or 1 half. So that gives us uh, 90 divided by 2, which is equal to 45 times 1 half, which is equal to 22.5. And since we're looking for the power, the units of that will be watts. That's the power. What about the real power? That's the real power. What about the reactive power Q, which is equal to hmm, 
that would be V RMS times I RMS times the sine of the phase angle. And so that would, in this case, be equal to 45 times the sine of uh, minus 60 degrees. Okay, so again, I want to find the magnitude of that. So I'm going to find the magnitude of this value right here. And because then I, of course, realize that Q will be downward when we draw the triangle. So in this case, that would be uh, sine of 60 times 45. Let's see here. So we have 60. Take the sine of that. Uh, we multiply it times 45. And we get 38.97. So it would be 38.97. And the reactive power, that would be VAR. And for units-wise, the reactive power is VAR. That means... Uh, Voltage ampere VA, the volt ampere times R. So that would be the reactive power, R for reactive and VA for volt ampere. So now we have at least the values of the average power and the reactive power. What about the power factor? Okay, power factor would be equal to the cosine of minus 60 degrees. That would be equal to... Uh, one half or 0 0.5 and now do we have a leading or a lagging power factor? Let's see here. Let's draw the triangle to get a feel of what's going on here. So here if we draw a triangle Notice we're going to have the real power. It's in this direction. There's the power and Q is downward this way So this is going to be a little bit longer. There's my Q. There's my P and uh, Notice if I don't draw a line this way, there's my triangle. So I can call this my P right here, and this is my S. And notice I will have an angle of phi equal to minus 60 degrees. So I have a negative angle. Negative angle means that it's capacitive, means the current leads. That means the power factor is a leading power factor because in this case we have a capacitive type circuit meaning the current leads to voltage which means the power factor leads and finally what we probably want to do is write down the impedance z in terms of r plus j x which is equal to the resistance which gives us 20 ohms and that would be minus because the reactance is capacitive so it would be minus j times 34.64 and that would be in terms of ohms and then if you want to express the power the complex power s can be expressed in terms of uh, p and q um, no that would be q not p that would be q so s would be equal to uh, that would be p and p is equal to 22.5 and that would be minus J, and that would be 38.97. And probably volt ampere might be a good way to look at it, or in terms of, uh, oh, not uh, volt times amps. Yeah, that would be a good way to look at it. And let's see, what else could we do? I think we've done just about everything. So we've got the impedance, we got um, Oh, what about the magnitude of S? Yes, I have that as well. Um, we have the power, we have Q, reactive power. I think we've got just about everything we're supposed to get. And so hopefully that'll solidify our understanding of how to deal with power in a circuit. And that's how it's done.